representative of Israel for his statement. I shall now make a statement in my capacity as Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation. Distinguished members of the Security Council, distinguished colleagues, representatives of UN member states, I have the honor to deliver the statement of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, Sergei Lavrov. In convening today's meeting as President of the Security Council, Russia's starting point was the importance of coming up with consolidated approaches from the international community to settling regional crises. The long-standing Palestinian-Israeli conflict is at the epicenter of upheaval in the Middle East. For more than seven decades, this unresolved problem has continued to be a source of international and regional disagreements and is exploited as ideological motivation for terrorist and extremist entities in different parts of the planet. The ongoing conflict brings immeasurable suffering to the Palestinian and Israeli peoples, to Arab states, and to the large Palestinian diaspora located there, including in Palestinian camps and the population in Palestinian camps. This state of affairs was the result of attempts to work in isolation outside the bounds of collective work to try and improve the situation. It's got to the point where unilateral initiatives are being advanced which not only ignore but also undermine what was endorsed by the UN and enshrined in Security Council and General Assembly resolutions, that is to say the international legal basis for the Palestinian-Israeli settlement. The result is is yet another deadlock which threatens to undermine regional stability. In maintaining constructive partnership links with all states in the region, Russia believes that in principle the improvement of Arab-Israeli relations is a beneficial phenomenon. Ultimately, a comprehensive and just Middle East settlement has always been and continues to be an integral component of our regional policy. Another matter is the fact that the normalizing of relations between Arab states and Israel should not leave the Palestinian question to one side. This question isn't going anywhere. We adhere to the tried and true point of view that the comprehensive stabilization of the situation in the Middle East will, by definition, not be possible without a long-term solution to the Palestinian question. And that approach is shared by the leadership of all Arab states. We should, without delay, focus efforts on the resumption of negotiations between Israel and Palestinians. At the same time, it's important that the political process use as its starting point the international decisions and agreements and understandings that have been reached between the parties. We see the task of today's meeting as confirming the international legal basis for the Palestinian-Israeli settlement, first and foremost the two-state principle, the implementation of which should lead to the creation of a Palestinian state coexisting in peace and security with Israel. We also must not forget about final status aspects such as refugees, water resources and the status of the holy sites of the three global religions in Jerusalem. We also take into account the fact that Arab countries remain committed to their well-known initiative. That said, the parties themselves need to adhere to and stick to their commitments to eschew unilateral steps that would preempt final status. And that means stopping settlement building and the dismantling of Palestinian homes, once and for all taking annexation plans off the table and putting an end to violence and together fighting terrorism. There is no doubt that a great deal will depend on the progress and results of inter-Palestinian dialogue. Together with, it, with its Egyptian partners, Russia has been supporting the Palestinian organizations to make them unified on the platform of the Palestine Liberation Organization. This is the key to realizing the national aspirations of the Palestinians based on the proposals of the Quartet of International Mediators that have been endorsed in the UN. We are in favor of the Middle East Quartet of International Mediators working more actively because this is a unique 
mediating mechanism that is endorsed by Security Council resolutions. It is able to and indeed must play its role in establishing direct Palestinian-Israeli negotiations. Russia proposed that the first phase of this, these talks should begin without prior conditions so that the parties themselves, without any pressure from outside, can agree on a mutually acceptable basis for bilateral dialogue, because historical experience has shown that a sustainable solution to any conflict is only possible when the protagonists conduct a negotiating process on a mutually acceptable platform. For our part, we will continue to work in this direction with all stakeholders in the region, in the Security Council, and within the quartet of international mediators. We are ready for close cooperation with our colleagues in this format, that is to say the UN, the United States and the European Union. We are ready for the involvement of regional players in that. We note that in his statement at the General Assembly in September, the President of Palestine, Mahmoud Abbas, confirmed his readiness to negotiate with Israel under the auspices of the Quartet. The diplomatic arsenal includes the Moscow Conference on the Middle East, in favour of which there is an international consensus enshrined in Security Council Resolution 1850 and the decisions of the Quartet. The Russian initiative to conduct a Palestinian-Israeli high-level meeting in Moscow remains on the table. Direct attention should be paid to the socio-economic situation on the occupied Palestinian territories and also the dire humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip. It is further complicated by the coronavirus pandemic. Therefore, we call upon the international community to use its donor potential to support the population of the Gaza Strip. A key role here is played by UNRWA. We call on donors to support UNRWA's activities. In October next year, 2021, we will mark the 30th anniversary of the Madrid Conference on the Middle East. It was there that we laid the conceptual foundation for achieving a Middle East settlement that should be comprehensive, encompass all negotiating tracks and be based on international legal decisions and principles. We believe that the legacy of Madrid is still very much needed. Thank you for your attention. I resume my function as President of the Council.